New Zealand, untouched. A land so pure and clean. Far from any smog-covered city, it is a land where animals are free to graze on nature's best. But take a closer look. All is not as it seems. New Zealand is a fraudster. Farming has long been at the heart of our nation, but the animals we rely on so much may be doing us more harm than good. As they roam the paddocks, they are unleashing a silent menace, and it's bringing on global warming. For the rest of the world, the major pollution problem is caused by vehicles and industry. In New Zealand, it's the humble cow and sheep. As they tirelessly chew their cud, they are oblivious to the food fermenting inside their stomach and the creation of a potent greenhouse gas known as methane. Only ruminants digest their food in this way. And even though there is little family resemblance, the cow and sheep are actually part of the same family of Bovidae. Out in the paddock, Bovidae live to eat. But they go for quantity rather than quality, and once their stomach is full, rumination begins. Rumination is a continuous chewing and regurgitating reflex, which reduces their grassy meal to a salivary pulp. Mm -hmm. the ideal living conditions for the bacteria that produce methane. But with around 40 million sheep and 10 million cows, and counting, the gas levels are rising. Lurking up in the atmosphere, methane is having a dramatic effect on global temperatures and could spell trouble for our climate. When we increase the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere from human activity, we're just enhancing the natural greenhouse effect that's there. So we're just cranking it up. And so this will lead through to uh, increased warming. So what is this greenhouse effect anyway? When the sun's rays streak down, only some penetrate our atmosphere and warm the surface of the Earth. Some heat then radiates back out into space. The rest bounces off gas particles and becomes trapped, creating an atmosphere just like a giant greenhouse. Compared to other gases, it doesn't take much methane to give this warming effect. Methane as a greenhouse gas is much more powerful than carbon dioxide over 20 times more powerful. So it has a big impact on global warming. The lowest amount of warming we can expect is one degree Celsius. Could be as high as five degrees Celsius uh, in the space of the next 100 years. This is a fantastic rate of warming. It's hard to believe that the good old cow and sheep can bring about extremes of weather, increased storms, sea level rise and global warming. It's just an animal. So how did we get ourselves in this predicament? Since very early times, man's been hooked on these animals and what they have to offer. It didn't take long before New Zealand's fertile soils were a sea of green overrun with grazing stock, and a nation's way of life was set in motion. Today, farming is still dominant, but the tin bucket is no longer practical. New technologies have fueled a dramatic expansion.
With quality products on our shelves, New Zealand's reputation has led to a lucrative export market. A strong association with agriculture has meant the cow and sheep have gained iconic status and farming has now spilled into the tourism sector. You'll notice here in New Zealand our sheep are very friendly. They might even give you a nice big way. But popularity doesn't outweigh environmental impact, so the government signed an international agreement to fend off looming climate change. The Kyoto Protocol was an idea whereby the countries most responsible for greenhouse gases would come together in what's called a cap and trade system. So we would put a cap on the, um, the amount of emissions that could come out of every country. And if one country went over and one country went under, then they would trade at a price. And at that stage, you brought economic considerations into an environmental issue. This protocol means New Zealand has to reduce methane emissions back to 1990 levels, which is difficult considering there's no off switch for an animal. It's turned out to be a bigger challenge than we thought, and it has for every other country. But um, because something is hard to do, doesn't mean that you shouldn't set out to do it. And actually, it's not a bad idea to start thinking about the opposite. What happens if you don't do something? What happens if nothing happens, like unfettered climate change and sea level rise? Is this OK? So we said that there needed to be a bunch of research undertaken and that because farmers weren't getting in any way penalised for their um, contribution to greenhouse gases, it was only fair that they paid for part of the research. And they said they wouldn't. As it turned out that we were already paying for some research, but the government in actual fact didn't want to recognise it because it had to be seen to be a a, uh, a government initiative, so there was a lot of politics involved. So we said, well then we will put a levy on you. So then they started a campaign called Fart Tax, because it sounded funny. Out the back of the farming sheds, a plan was hatched to try and overthrow the Fart Tax. Back in the driver's seat at his Opanaki farm today. But it's MP Shane Arden's antics on a tractor called Myrtle that has him in serious trouble. The actual fact of trying to do something which invades parliament buildings is very serious. I've never known anything like that in all the 37 and a half years I've been here. The tract incident happened during yesterday's farmers' protest against flatulence tax. Another also tried his luck. Police want the protester to come forward and they'll speak to Mr Arden next week. The day started with the farmers all arriving at the Malcolm Fowler Centre in the centre of Wellington uh, and a procession of uh, tractors and uh, farmers marched right through the centre of Wellington with placards uh, and arrived on the full court of, of Parliament. During the discussion, the speeches, the you know the, the, the stuff that went on there, uh, the idea came to me that this little tractor would be well positioned a little bit further up the steps than where it was. Uh, it had a flag on the back and it had an excellent billboard, uh, and so I spoke to the owner, and uh, you know planned it over about three minutes and drove the tractor up the steps of Parliament. Simple as that. I'm not surprised that Shane drove a tractor up Parliament. That's roughly Shane's contribution to democratic process and the advancement of civilisation. But they had a game to play, and the game was to beat up on a Labour government. They would prefer to have a national government, and their other aim was to improve Federated Farmers' membership. So um, that's what was motivating them. Yeah, it may be said uh, by some that, the, that our protest was just to boost our profile and membership numbers, but I can assure you it wasn't. 
We are a member-based organisation and we react to the needs and uh, concerns of our members and our farmer members are extremely upset about this tax and uh, we would have got shot if we didn't protest. But was Shane's little tractor stunt really effective in fighting the climate change menace? You know, you could never expect uh, the sort of reaction that we did get. The reality was that uh, I got newspaper clippings from Red Square in, in Russia from a colleague. CNN uh, interviewed me, BBC interviewed me. Uh, but more importantly, we were able to expose the stupidity of the notion that you could tax uh, belching and flatulence from cattle. Uh, and we had the silly tax dropped. Everyone thinks that the fart tax campaign was won by the farmers. Everyone thinks that... You know, my interest is not who wins the fart tax campaign, for God's sake. My interest is in getting research funded and underway, and, and we have. It's really good. And the government's put some money into that as well. But has the wool been pulled over our eyes? Have all the political antics hidden the truth? Does this gas really come from a fart? Fart tax? <laughs> OK, it sounds ridiculous. There's a tax on people farting. People farting? Well, obviously it must be some sort of gas or something like that. Getting warmer. See this trash I've got here? The probably took a bottle of that up the cow's bum and measured the content and do it on a milligrams per um, kilogram ratio. Oh, how scientific. You no, know, it's only the New Zealanders would think of something like that. What would an Aussie know? That um, cow's fat and you have to pay for it? But is it actually a fart? Let's have a real look where all this hot air is coming from. Inside the cow's stomach. It all takes place within the rumen. Amongst the grassy stomach contents of both cows and sheep live millions of bacteria. As the grass is digested, hydrogen is produced. When a certain bacteria called a methanogen feeds on this hydrogen, nasty methane gas is formed. So how does methane escape from their stomach? It's not from the rear end as most believe, oh no. It escapes when the animal regurgitates its cud and it's burped out the front. It's been burps, not farts, that have caused the damage. So to get this burping under control, animals are being recruited into armies of research. Throughout the country, farm sheds have become science labs. Here, sheep are caged and cows are herded indoors. If we want to reduce methane, the easiest way in the world is just to get rid of all the animals. You know, but that is not a very viable option, especially if you want to get re-elected or eat meat or milk or have leather shoes. So we've got to do something to reduce the amount of methane being produced in the rumen. So the first thing we have to do is know what the methane emissions already are. Gathering this gas is no easy task. All kinds of weird contraptions are strapped onto the animals to discover the amount of methane they breathe out during their digestion. To know just how much they have digested, scientists need to collect and weigh their droppings.
These specially made harnesses, which sit above the animal's nose, suck the methane from each hefty burp. Once through the tube, the methane is collected in a pressurised canister called a yolk. For five days, these animals will breathe for science and a better climate. Once we know how much methane is produced, then we can set about lowering it. The way we work this out depends on how much they eat. So we have cows indoors like this, where we can measure how much they eat and we measure how much methane they produce. Investigating what Bovidae eat is just as important as how much. So different feed types are being trialled to discover their impact on methane production. And although it's all just grass, the subtle differences in varieties like rye or clover might actually generate less methane inside their stomach. Throughout the trial, new diets are prepared daily, and hopefully one will provide the answer to the methane problem. But if the miracle feed is found, will it be too expensive for the farmers? I guess the main finding is that it's going to be pretty hard to reduce methane and keep making a profit. It's going to be a long term thing with uh, small gains, I suspect. It is complicated and we should always remember that the methanogens have been around for a lot longer than the humans. And you make a change and the methanogen will make a change as well and it'll come back and uh, I think it'll keep on making methane, maybe a bit less of it. So if methane is only reduced by a small amount, has it been worth all this time in the cage? What does the future hold for our grazing animals? I don't know what the solution will be, but I do know the solution, if it's going to arise, will arise from good research. And I do know that New Zealand has got a good research program and has got good research scientists. If animals are admitting methane, then there is an efficiency loss. So it's not in the farmer's best interest uh, or agricultural's best interest uh, for that to happen. If we can give any treatment that improves cow productivity so that they make more milk from a similar amount of feed, then we're reducing the amount of methane per unit of product. And I think that's an important way to look at it. Less methane per unit of product, then we're winning. But is there another option? Rather than losing this potential energy, could it be harnessed? Could it be the power of the future? One thing that is pretty interesting and which is now happening in Europe is to um, collect uh, cow dung and turn that into methane and use that to heat the um, buildings in which the farming is taking place. Methane could become a fuel and it's a very clean burning fuel so it has quite a lot going for it. Uh, it also could be a source of hydrogen, which some people argue that in the future we're going to have to move towards a hydrogen economy to replace petrol for vehicles. And so that could allow us to be less dependent upon imports of, of oil. But could a cow in a paddock really produce enough fuel for our needs? A cow like this will produce about 80 or 90 kilograms of methane a year. If you could capture all that methane and convert it into petrol, you could run a mid-sized car for a thousand kilometres. So that's one cow, the methane from one cow in one year is enough energy to run a mid-sized car for a thousand kilometres. If the average herd is 300 cows and you could collect their methane, you could wear a new car out. So one day, will vehicles run on burps alone? 
Perhaps New Zealand's burping bovidae will end our oil dependence and provide for us once again. This time with the fuel of the future. Bovan brand gasoline gets you moving. Well, those tossers up in Wellington, well, this time they've gone too far. It's not factories causing emissions or the humble motor car. They say it's flatulence from our livestock and we've got to take it apart. And they've signed up with Kyoto and they're gonna tax the far. That's why I'm sitting down here in my wool shed. I'm staring at my shoes Cause I've got those far tax blues Well, there's tons of gas, he reckons From every Kiwi farm So I followed around me flock A fartometer on me arm Well, I never heard one squeak all day I wasn't very smart Cause my sheep are all female And of course ladies never fart That's why I'm sitting down here in my wool shed Shouldn't have to pay my dues Cause I got those fat tax blues Yeah, baby Hey, Pete, pull my finger